Hey guys, it's April from Getting Hooker With It. Today I have a historical fiction book haul. Many of these books were recommended to me by fellow booktubers, so I just had to pick them up. You know how it goes. Let's dive in. The first book that I picked up was A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. Now, he is most well known for uh, writing The Rules of Civility. I have that on my shelf already. I'm eager to read that and I'm going to read that first before I read this. This is about a count in 1922 who was sentenced to house arrest, but he's staying at this elaborate, gorgeous hotel. And the entire book, it sounds like, takes place in this hotel, but things happen there. So I am looking forward to that. The next book is Amy Snow. Um, I have seen this so many times and wanted to pick it up so many times that I'm really glad that I finally did. This is about a young girl who, as an infant, was left in the snow to die. And this other girl named Aurelia, who is this very rich girl, she finds her and decides, no, I'm, I'm keeping her and her parents seem to go along with it. They're not too happy about it. Um, and then Aurelia dies as a young woman and she leaves behind a coded letter to Amy. And Amy essentially is sent on like a treasure hunt um, all over England and she, every time she gets to the next location that she is supposed to go to because Aurelia has sent her there she gets another letter from her you know sister um, I would call them sisters it just sounds like it's gonna be super heartwarming um, tiny bit mysterious I am so looking forward to this I can't even tell you the next book is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. Katie over at Life Between Words recommended this on her channel and I knew that I had already really wanted to read it so I picked this up at Book Outlet when they were having their big sale uh, and I'm really looking forward to this. This sounds like a very sweet novel about a father's love for his children. I'm so happy that I have this in my collection now. So thank you, Katie, for the recommendation. The next book is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. Uh, this was on my spring TBR and I wanted it in my collection. I don't know what it is about Kate Morton novels that I like to have. It's weird. I think the only one that I'm missing is The Secret Keeper and I've already read that, so I don't need it. But um, this is a chunker. It's, uh, it's over 400 pages, so um, I'm looking forward to this. The next book is Sue Monk Kids, The Invention of Wings. This follows two girls in the early 19th century. Um, Sarah is a young white girl and she, on her 11th birthday, is given a slave as a gift, which is a very odd thing to give anyone. But, um, it's about her relationship, Sarah's relationship with Hetty. And apparently they form a very, very strong relationship. I'm so looking forward to reading about that bond between them and I'm hoping it's gonna be good. Next I picked up The Summer Before the War. Um, this takes place in 1914. Uh, which is the summer before the war. It sounds like it's going to be a super slow moving book, but kind of about the calm before the storm of a war. So uh, I heard really, really good things about this. I've seen it so many times in bookshops and I'd never picked it up and I finally have it. So I'm very happy about that. I also picked up the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. My mom had recommended this book to me um, a long time ago and I've been looking for it for a while now to have on my shelves and I found it in a library um, in their used section. So this takes place in January of 1946 and it sounds like this little island um, of Guernsey create this little society to deal with the fact that they're being occupied by Germany at, during the Second World War um, and it sounds like they're able to kind of rise against the Germans through this. I don't know too much more about it than that but it's this short tiny little thing that I am super excited for and I've been meaning to read forever. This next one is so strange. So 
I had just finished reading The Boston Girl by Anita Diamant. And uh, Julie from A Girl and a Book uh, wrote in my comment section that she really loved The Red Tent um, and that she thought it was like a feminist book and she really liked it. And so I was like, well, I'm going to have to get that the next time I see it. I literally went out that night to a library and in their used section was this and not just one copy of The Red Tent, there were two. So I was able to get the one that looked a little bit better. So I was so excited about that. It was just strange that it would be there. This is the story of Leah, Rachel, Zilpa, and Bella, uh, the four wives of Jacob from the book of Genesis. So I have no idea what to expect other than this is a bit of a feminist book and I am totally down with that. So thanks for Julie for the recommendation because I, I got it. The Poisonwood Bible was another one that I was able to get my hands on. This story follows a family of six, um, two parents and their four da daughters. Um, so the father is a missionary and he decides to take his children in 1959 and move to the Congo. It says that what follows is a suspenseful epic of one family's tragic undoing and remarkable reconstruction over the course of three decades in post-colonial Africa. I've heard only amazing things about this book. Um, I saw it and I knew I had to have this on my shelf. I also picked up Girl Waits with Gun. I believe this is a first in a series. It's a Western novel and it follows the first um, female sheriff uh, called Constance Cop, and it follows her adventures. I just thought that sounded really, really cool. I really love this cover so, so much. And so I got it. The next book is uh, The Stone Diaries by Carol Shields. I have never ever read Carol Shields and I know that this is the best place to start or so I've heard. Um, so this follows one woman, Daisy Goodwill, um, throughout her entire life. She's born in 1905 and it follows her, um, her marriage and the loss of her husband. Um, and then she gets married again and motherhood and just her entire life. This one won the Pulitzer Prize and the Governor General General's Award. So I've heard amazing things about this and I know that this is going to be good. I read like just the first few lines of this and I was instantly drawn in. So I'm so happy about having this on my shelf. The last book that I got was completely at random. I got it strictly because of the cover. It's just gorgeous. I love this. It is called The Movement of Stars. It is about a woman in 1845. She's expected by her family to do the good thing and, you know, marry and have children. But instead, she finds herself drawn to the stars. And she wants to discover this specific comet that it sounds like the whole world is hoping to discover this particular comet. Um, and she wants to be the first and it just sounded really lovely. That cover just did me in. So those are all of the historical fiction books that I was able to get. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any favorite historical fiction books because as you can tell, I am a huge fan and so uh, I would love to know any more to add to my shelf. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye!